Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Earthly Headlines. Today I came across this article about renewable energy, or quote, unlimited renewable energy. And researchers from the University of Cambridge, they figured this out by splitting water into hydrogen and oxygen. And the way they did this was through a process called semi-artificial photosynthesis. It's based off the regular photosynthesis that uh, the plants use to convert sunlight into energy, but it's a little bit different. Well, it's a lot different because it's semi-artificial. The main difference is that in nature, photosynthesis, it only uses a bare minimum energy to split into two different um, compounds, which is hydrogen and, um, or not compounds, uh, two different um, hydrogen and oxygen. They've been trying to do this for a while because hydrogen obviously is a potential green and unlimited source of renewable energy. And there have been a lot of resources put into uh, figuring out which type of energy to use and what what could be a lot cleaner alternative than what we have now, which is uh, fossil fuel based. So how the how the researchers ended up doing semi artificial photosynthesis is that they reactivated an enzyme present in algae called hydrogenase, and what that does it reduces protons into hydrogen. Oxygen is the byproduct of photosynthesis, so that's basically uh, created when the plant split, or the water absorbed rather by the plants that split. Artificial photosynthesis has been around for a while, but it wasn't successfully used to create renewable energy because uh, th- there's uh, it involves the use of catalysts, which tend to uh, be toxic and expensive. So it wasn't feasible and logical to use it as um, to supplant the uh, the other energies that we have currently, especially green energy. Because it's counterproductive, right? You don't want any toxins in what's supposed to be green energy. So they use this algae that I talked about earlier. Uh, Well, they extracted the the hydrogenase, that enzyme from the algae. So this is what uh, Katarzyna Sokol, the PhD student at St. John's College. During evolution, this process has been deactivated because it wasn't necessary for survival, but we successfully managed to bypass the inactivity to achieve the reaction we wanted, splitting water into hydrogen and oxygen. So this whole system of solar energy conversion has, like I said earlier, has been something that a lot of time, attention, and resources have been dedicated to. And now, with this milestone that they've been able to split uh, through the artificial the semi-artificial uh, process, they're able to cleanly split hydrogen and oxygen. So there's no toxins involved in this. Uh, from what I'm reading, Ms. Sokol hopes the findings will uh, enable new innovative models systems for solar energy conversion to be developed. The, this new met- method also managed to absorb more solar light than natural photosynthesis uh, because natural photosynthesis is not as efficient. It has evolved merely to survive, so it makes the bare minimum amount of energy needed. That's what I was talking about earlier, if I wasn't clear earlier. Um, around 1 or 2% of what it could potentially convert and store. So that is why it's called semi-artificial photosynthesis. It's been around before, but not to this degree, like I said earlier. So this, c- coupled with uh, solar energy and um, geothermal energy and stuff, on paper, it seems like a good idea, but making the switch over to green alternative energy um, has not uh, taken as insofar as the market goes. But you know, th- there are people out there who are are hopeful that uh, we could just switch over to something more efficient and probably better for not just the environment, but just everything else, the economy, if you want to get really deep politics. And- and relate countries and stuff. So this would have a huge dramatic effect on the world that we live in. But uh, the most important thing though, that this uh, discovery brings to the table is that it opens up a toolbox for developing future systems for solar energy conversion, which means basically it gives us more options in the future and we can build upon this discovery because it's sort of like a prerequisite to get uh, any closer to an alternative energy source. So basically semi-arti- arti- semi-artificial photosynthesis uh, allows us to selectively tru- choose. Well, it's an example of, of humans able to uh, progressively choose the processes we want without some of the um, roadblocks in nature. 
So um, again, we we can put more energy into this this uh, reaction, whereas in nature, uh, it only does, like I said earlier, it only does an act, the bare minimum amount of energy, just because it's trying to, it's only doing as much as it needs to do, to survive. I'm talking about the plant and other other organisms that utilize natural photosynthesis. This approach could be used to couple other reactions together to see what can be done, learn from these reactions, and then build synthetic, more robust pieces of solar energy technology. So yeah, this stuff will supplement or innovate even new uh, different types of solar energy technology, but uh, it supplements the ones that we have now. If you're somebody who owns land and wants to either get off the grid or reduce your carbon footprint or any of those things with the environment in mind, then this is probably something you might be looking into if you're on the cutting edge. But anyway, let me know what you guys think about renewable energy and this type of stuff. Is it a waste of time? Is it a scam? Um, is it legitimate? Those are basically the first co comments that come up. I think if it, if there, if there is a lot of people um, involved in green energy and they really believe in it and they're, they've been working on it for years and they've been making marked progress, then of course, I think it's worth it to um, to explore those avenues. Um, other people think we should go desalinization, although there's a lot of roadblocks with that in terms of energy consumption and in terms of the trade-off. Is it worth it to put that much energy to get uh, to take to desalinate uh, all the water along the coast? So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments, and I'll talk. To, I'll see you guys tomorrow.